Okay. Tan Rabbanon, the rabbis taught, if someone, let's say, did not do Badika on the 14th at night, okay? So it's the 14th during the day. The Mishnah, the Brisa says, Ein boitkin loyla or hachama. You're not supposed to do the Badika to the light of the sun, halavana, and not to the light of the moon, and not to the light of a torch. You have to use the light of a lamp, of a one single fire on a lamp. So, because the light of a lamp is beautiful for the bedika. Then the Brisa says, even though there's no outright proof from the Psukim that the Or Haner is the best thing, the light of one single lamp is most uh, finest for a Badika, I have like a hint to it in the Psukim. So the way this goes, it goes like this. I'm just giving it to you, you may have seen this yesterday, but the Pasuk says, Shivas Yom Sa'or Lo Yamatze Bivatechem. See the word Matze? The next Pasuk here on the chart says, Vayechapis Pagodel Hechel Vakotn Kila Vayimotze. By Yosef, when he sent out to call the brothers back, they were looking for his, his Becher, his goblet. They searched the oldest, ba- oldest, uh, the oldest brother's bag and they ended with the, the smallest brother, Binyamin, and they found the Becher there. So vayimotze. So there's a combination yimotze, common word, and here it says the word chipus over here in that pasuk. Then there's another pasuk that says v'hoya be'esahi. God says at that time a chapes is Yerushalayim baneir. So I'm going to seek out Yerushalayim with uh, lights, which means God's going to look after Jerusalem and their averus that they're doing. So the word chipus is has the word neiros there, and then we find neiros. There is one pasuk that has the word ner together with the word chefes over here. So when you draw the line, so that's ner Hashem nishmas adam, the the lamp of Hashem is the soul of a person. Chefes who searches kol chadrei vatrem all the chambers of the inside of the of the person intestines of a person. So it's almost like we take the word ner and bring it all the way up to shiva siyam sar lo yamatzi botechem. And it's almost as if it says the way you search to make sure that there's no chametz in your house is use that ner. That's how the post, that's how the Gemara is going to say it. Very odd way, but oimer. So shnema it says in the pasuk. This is the zeicher ledavar. Shivas yamim sa'or lo yimotzi v'vatechem. Oimer. Oimer. That pasuk should remind you of another pasuk that it says yimotzi. Vayichapes bagodol heichel vayimotzi. And then by Yoimer, there's a pasuk that says, "But Esa he chapes is Yerushalayim ban Neiros." But Oimer, and then there's another pasuk, "Neir Hashem nishmas Adam chayfes kol chadre botan." So we almost say that the word Neir is almost as if it appears in the first pasuk. So or lo yimotze bevatechem. I'll just point out to you that the Gemara could have simply said, "Skip the third pasuk." You go shivas yom sarlam ratzim techet. Then it says, "Vay chapes vay yimotze." And here it says chayfes, which is like the word chapes, and it says the word ner. You can skip that third pasuk. Nevertheless, I, I just want to mention that the Gemara is trying to say that the searching of chametz is almost like the searching of averus. That's how the Gemara uses that remez, that uh, the searching of chametz is like the searching of averus in a person, the sins to try to correct your wrong, and the, the light, the lamp, of the search is the nair of the, is the soul of a person. Anyway, that's the Gemara. So back into the Gemara. So the Gemara wants to analyze the Brisa right over here. How are you searching for the Chomets by the, by the light of the sun? What are, what are you searching? Do you want to say that you're trying to search a courtyard, let's say your whole front yard, and you're searching for chametz, so for, so you're not allowed. First of all, your front courtyard, you don't even need a bedika there at all. Ha'ama Rava, Rava said, Chatzer, your front courtyard ain't a tzricha bedika. You don't have to search for chametz there, because even if there was like you think there's chametz there, you can assume it's gone. But they show arvin between sham because the ravens come there and they eat up all the chametz that you have there. So you don't really need to do searching there. 
So when are you using the sunlight? Elo ba'achasadra. Ba'achasadra is a porch, a portico, which is surrounded by three walls and a roof deck, but it's opened up on the front, on the front. So it's your front porch, which is opened up on the fourth, on the fourth wall. It's totally open to the street. So the Gemara says that kind of porch, you want hamarava, achsadra la'orinadakis. You could uh, search the porch for, if you're using the sun. Rashi says la'orinadakis, la'or shalonadakis. Ve'en tzorach lahove or haner balay, Rashi says. On the 13th of the day, let's say when you get home from work that day, and it's not yet night, you could just search, you could start your search by looking at the porch because there sunlight does work. So what are we talking about that sunlight is not going to work? If it's talking about your chutzer, you don't need it. And if it's talking about your porch, it does, you, the Rava said that you could use the sunlight. The Gemara says, like Tzricha, it's not necessary. We're talking about light. Tzricha, we need it for La Ruba de Becheder. It's talking about the, the skylight in your room. And there, if, if it says not to do it with the sunlight. Wait a second. Udeheicha. Where are you searching for the chametz? If it's directly underneath the skylight, so why shouldn't you be able to use the sunlight? It should be just as good. Isn't that the same thing as porch? Allah says the Gemara lit stadin. Off to the sides, not directly under the skylight. You, you, uh, there, you could potentially use the sunlight, but the Chazal say don't use the sunlight because it's off to the side. And there, it won't be good. You have to use an or and there. So that ends that discussion of when would I think an or a would be good, and the Gemish Brisa says it's not good. So now the, Gebrisa, the Gemara says that the Brisa said you should not use a torch. A torch means you have a candle, like when you have a Havdola lamp. So the question is, va'avuka loy? Are you not supposed to use a, a, uh, a torch? Vama Rava, Rava says... Now, I don't understand why the Gemara is doing this, but the Gemara could simply say, isn't a torch provide more light than a single candle? But the Gemara goes much deeper. The Gemara says, Ba'ama Rava. Rava said, a torch is, uh, we find a torch to have more light than a regular candle. How do you know that? I'll bring you a Pasuk. The Pasuk says, why does it say in the Pasuk? V'noiga ko'or tiyer. That means that the tzaddikim, in, the, in Olam Haba are gonna have such a glow like the light that existed in, during the first six days of creation. There was a special light that God created that existed in the first six days of creation. Sadiqim in the future world are gonna have that kind of a glow. They're gonna get this radiance from God, so to speak. But God's gonna be more stronger than them. The Sham, there is hidden the ultimate power of God. That means God's going to have more of a light than a regular tzaddik. At that time, how are tzaddikim going to be compared to the presence of God? It's going to look like kener b'fnei avuka, like a, a, a one single lamp before a torch. So we see a torch has much more light than a regular ner. So why shouldn't you be able to use a torch? And then I'll prove it to you that we like to use torches uh, when it comes to uh, Mitzvahs that require that talk about fire. But Amar Rav Rav said, "Avuka la using a torch to for Havdala, mitzvah min hamufchar. That's the better way to do the mitzvah. And the pre- reason is probably because he's saying boyre me oire haish. And when you have a fire that has an all different colors and it's large, that's the mitzvah min hamufchar to uh, to, uh, to to use for Havdala lamp. So why the question ends? Why shouldn't I be able to use a, a torch? for a bedika. So the Gemara gives you four turuts and why not? What's the difference between a torch and a regular lamp? Omer Rav Nachmar Yitzchak, Teretz number one, is zeh yocho lachnisei lachorim lastokim. This one, you can uh, bring a, 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 a little single lamp, you can bring it into a little cubby hole or a crack. They used to have cracks in the wall, little cubby holes to put items there in their, in their houses. And therefore to do the bedika, a, a, a single lamp can enter those small places. But a torch, a torch cannot be brought into cracks and cubbies. That's Teretz number one, why it's better to use a nair. Rav Zvid, Amar Rav Zvid said, this one, that means 
a nair, the light is more directed in front of you. The zeb, but a torch, gives more light to behind you. And so therefore, it's a sort of, when you contrast the little light it gives in front of you to the light behind you, a torch doesn't give you good, clear, clearer vision uh, when you're looking for something small. Rapapa Omar Rapapa says a simple common sense, Teretz, hi, boyis, the torch makes you nervous. When it's jumping, it's too big, you might light a fire. It might catch fire to a curtain or something. God forbid, but hi, Lloyd boys. But a regular lamp, you're not so nervous. And the idea is to have your uh, serenity and calmness when you're doing the Badika's comments. So that's Teretz number three. Ravina Amar Ravina says, hi, Moshach Nohira. A single lamp has a direct light. It does, it's more focused and straight, and it doesn't go, uh, it doesn't go off and on. Bahai miktaf iktufe. This, uh, the, 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 the torch jumps. The lamp is jumping a little bit, and therefore, that jumping takes away your focus. And therefore, Chazal said that you should not use a torch. Now, Chazal probably meant to say that if Bediyevid you use a torch, you're not yoytze the Badika. So if someone Bediyevid used a torch, he's not yoytze at all the Badika. And now there's a whole question in the Poiskim, can someone uh, be yoytze the Badika if he uses one a, a flashlight, it gives off very good uh, light, would you be yoytze the Badika? Or they, do they really, really require you to do, you only use a lamp or not? Depends on the tarots that the Gemara just gave. Anyway, next the piece of Gemara. The Mishnah says, you're not supposed to, you don't have to do badika. So this extra word is kol, right over here, I'm circling it, because the Mishnah could just simply say, a place that you don't bring chametz and you don't need badika. Kol means any place. What does that include? What is that coming to add? That a pl- so we're going to add a place that there's a possibility to bring chametz in, but since generally you don't bring comments, you don't have to do Badika. What are we talking about? The following brisa. If you have a hole on top, let's say a, 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 a cubby hole, but it's very high, out of the reach of a normal heighted person. Or a cubby hole that's very low on the floor, like close to the ground. You have to bend down to use it. There you don't have to do Badika because generally people are not using it. The Gag Hayetzia. Well, let's say you have a uh, carriage house just on the side of your house and the roof over there is slanted. So, you, you know, you could reach to the top of the roof, but you're not going to put things on it because it's sloped and therefore things that you're going to put there are going to roll off. The gag hamigdal or the gag of a big, to- of a big closet, again, the, the, the top of a big closet, amwar, which you're not putting things there. The refus bakar, the, a barn full of cattle, velulin or, velulin, uh, or a... a a chicken coop, or masbein, a place where you store wood. So these things with the cattle and the chicken coop, you can assume that uh, that the animals themselves ate it. The chicken ate it. The animals ate the. If you had, even if you left there some food, the the, the animals ate it. Umatbein is a place of of um, of straw. Or a storage house of wine. Let's say you're, you're in the wine business. Your storage where you store wine. Where you store oil. Don't have to have a dika. Rab Shimon Megabliel Oimer. Shimon Megabliel says, Mita hachaylekes, besoy chabayis, umaf sekes, tzrich medika. Rab Shimon Megabliel says, let's say you have this bed that's very high. The legs are very high. So it's a tall bed, right? You have to get up. Now, why did they have a tall bed in the middle of the room? Somehow this bed divided the room from one side to the other side. It was a, probably had one big room and it, this bed in the middle divided it. So generally uh, he's felt that sometimes you could put things underneath the bed. So therefore uh, it needs a badika. Says the Gemara, Uraminu, let me ask you a contradiction from another brisa. Another brisa says, Khur, if you have a hole, Shebein Odom Lechaver between one person and his friend. Let's say two people live near each other and uh, they have a hole, a cubby hole that goes from one uh, apartment to the next apartment. So, one, one neighbor does the bedik until the end of his hand reach, as much as he could go into the hole. And this one reaches in to, to where his hand can reach. 
And then, the rest that's probably in between, you nullify in your heart. Because what you're assuming over here is not that no chametz ended up in the middle. You're assuming that you actually put chametz in your area, but maybe it rolled into an area that's out of reach to you. So by Badika, all you have to do is do your best to get the chametz out. But if you can't reach it, then you do a bitl, and that's enough. Because on um, Pesach, you're not going to reach into that place because you can't reach it. So you do bitl. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says, so here you see that holes, copy holes, you do have to do bedika in. And the first price said you don't have to do bedika. Now the Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says, mita echelekas b'seich habayis. You have a mita that's uh, dividing a house, a room. The eitzim of vonim sedurim tachten. You already put stones and wood underneath the bed, right? So there's a small gaps. Umafsekes, and that's how you're dividing up the rooms. You don't have to check underneath the bed. So the Gemara says, Kasher mita mita, kasher chayur na chayur. I have a contradiction between one bed and one bed. Ram Shimon Gabriel said, meet, in the second Brisa says, you, on bed that divides up the house, you do not have to do bedika. And the first Brisa he said, mita chalakas were my uh, bedika. And then the question was, chayur na chayur. Hold, cubby hold to cubby hold. The second Brisa said, a cubby hold, you do have to do bedika. And the first Brisa said, a cubby hold, you do not have to do the bedika. So very simple, like kasha. The kabi chayrin a chayrin like kasha. It's not a question between one kabi hole and the other kabi hole. Ha, oh, when don't you have to do bedika on kabi holes? Be ilo uvi tatoi. If the kabi hole is way up, up on top, or way up on the bottom, where people are not putting chametz there, or they're putting chametz there, but it would be with great difficulty. So generally, you're not putting chametz there, and the and that's the chiddush, by the way of our Mishnah saying that although potentially you could put chametz there, but since it's not a mokum that you, you, you're accustomed, you often put chametz there, you don't have to do bedika. Ha bemitz a. So, but in our, when the Brisa says that you do have to do uh, a bedika in, in a cubby hole, if it's right in the middle, you know, uh, where you could reach it, it's right in the middle of your body length, then it's a cubby hole that you would use, and therefore you would need bedika. Mita, mita loy kasha. A bed to a bed is not a question. Ha de medalia, ha de mitatai. The medalia means that it's very, very high, Rashi says. Shikvoya harbe, as Rashi says, v'yesh avir tachter harbe mechetash mishta. There's so much space underneath the bed, then it's, you're definitely putting things underneath the bed. And therefore, it would require bedika. When did Rab, when did Rab Shimon Belial say in the second price it does not require bedika? Dim tatai. That means it's the very little space underneath the bed. You actually have wood and stones there, so it's already uh, using up space. It's not easy to use it, and therefore it doesn't need a bedika. So the Kiddush of the Mishnah is that a place that you don't, that you don't, uh, that, that's not used for chametz doesn't mean that you never use chametz there. It means that you don't often use chametz there, or if you're going to use chametz, you're going to put chametz there, it's going to be with great difficulty. That's a place that doesn't need bedika. The Brisa said, the, our Brisa that we started off said, Oitzus Yayin, a, a storage wine, doesn't need Bedika. Frank the Gemara of Atanya, but we have a Brisa, Oitzus Yayin, Sarach Bedika. A storage wine does need Bedika. Oitzus Shemen, but if it's an oil storage place in your home, ain't Sarach Bedika. You don't need Bedika because you're not going there during your meal. So when does, so, so we have a difficulty. Does a, a storage place of wine, your wine cellar, need Bedika? So hachab my skin, yes. Bim is topic. It's a type. If it's the type of wine cellar that, if you ran out of wine, you would go to the wine cellar to bring up more wine. So then it's a type of wine cellar that needs bedika. The type of wine cellar that does not need bedika is something that you will never go use during the meal. So the Gemara says iachi shem by by oil storehouses. You should also make a. a uh, you should also make a. You should also make that differentiation and say that sometimes in the meal you'll use oil from the from the from the pantry that the, your oil pantry. So the Gemara says, "Shemen yesh keval achilam." A person knows before he starts the meal how much oil he's going to need in that meal. He knows what the amount of oil he's going to use for his bread, uh, olive oil, etc. Yayin, a wine, is unusual. Ain keval shtiyah. 
it's not known. You don't have a set amount you're going to drink. Sometimes you're in the mood, you'll drink a lot. And therefore, in the middle of the meal, you're going to, you're going to start telling your servant to go bring you more wine. So therefore, it's not set. So when, he, when the servant set the table, it's, it's possible he set less wine than you need. And, and often, you're going to ask him to go in the middle of the meal to bring you more wine. Tana Rabchia Rabchia taught, Asru Oitzu Sheikha Bababel, Ka'oitzu Siyayim Barit Yisrael, Bimestapeg. In Babel, right, in Babylonia, the Jews there were accustomed to drink beer at every meal. Like, like in Israel, like in Eretz Israel, they would drink wine. In Babel, they would drink beer. And therefore, an oitzer, a storage uh, cellar full of beer, would require bedika. Of course, not the, maybe it's kosher le Pesach beer. So that kind of beer. Well, it's not made from wheat. But it's it, the, the, what we're talking about a beer that in the middle of the meal, you would ask your waiter to go get you more beer because uh, maybe he didn't put enough beer on the table, and that night you're in the mood to have more. So that type of oitzus sheichar that you use during the meal would require a bedika. Am Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, bei dogim, uh, the, the, your pantry that holds your fish, ain't sarach bedika, doesn't need bedika. Because it, generally you set the table with the fish that you're going to eat, and you never go there during the meal with your bread. Frank, the more of Tanya, we learned the breich tzrich bedika. That, that your, your pantry with your fish, you, you know, your cold closet would need a bedika because you, you're using the fish closet in the middle of the meal. So the Gemara says, like kasha, that's not a question. Hob big fish, you never, you're never going to use in the middle of the meal. Hob if it's small fish, right? So maybe in the middle of the meal, you ran out of your small fish, you'll ask the, the waiter to get you some small fish. So that's a closet that you will definitely use during the meal. Again, the question is, the possibility is that the waiter is going to leave a, a piece of bread in that, in that closet, and therefore that place would require uh, bedika. Amar Rabbah Barahuna, Rabbah Barahuna said, Be milcha, the closet that you have salt. And it's interesting because we take salt so for granted, but the salt was, uh, was a huge commodity. You didn't just uh, you know, give it freely. You had your little closet that you, you had salt there. Uh, I think the word salary comes from the word salt because that's how they, uh, they uh, that's how they paid you for work that you did. They paid you in salt, salary. Ubei kira, the place that you have your wood, sraruch bedika, you need bedika because again, during the meal, you may come there. Amara a papa said, bei tzivi, the place where you would, ubei tamri, the place for your date, sraruch bedika, that needs uh, bedika. Okay. Tana, we learned in Abraisa. Ein mechaivin oyser lahachnes yoder lechorim. Here's interesting, Gabar. You don't have to go into a place, into the cubby hole or the cracks, live doit to check, because it, it could lead to a dangerous. It's a dangerous situation. So don't stick your hand into the cubby hole or to the crack because it's a dangerous situation. Say to Gabar, my sakana, what's the dangerous situation? He name, do you say, my sakana's akrov? Because it's a dangerous, there might be a scorpion there and you'll, and you'll, you'll get bitten. So the Gemara says, then, when you first used the, the, the crack and the, the cubby hole, how did you use it? Uh, uh, why weren't you concerned about a scorpion then? Like, not so. Sricha, we're talking about, it's necessary to tell you that the wall, the nafo, you used this in your house and then your wall collapsed. So therefore, Therefore, it's dangerous now to search for the chametz that you were at one time left in the hole, in the cubby hole. Therefore, we doesn't need bedika. Therefore, don't do bedika. Frankly, Gemara, e nafel if it fell, lomer li bedika. If something falls, you don't even need bedika at all. Not because of sakana, just plain. You don't need bedika. But now we learned in the Mishnah, chametz enough lala mapayla. If a wall fell down, harayu kumavori, you consider it as if it's gone, right? So the Gemara says, Hossam, over there, when do you consider it as if you don't have to do Badika? If a door can't search it, that means that the pile of rubble is three Tvachim high, then you, can, you don't have to even do Badika there. Leave it there because it's never going to be uncovered during Pesach. Hocha, but over here, we're talking about a wall that collapsed, but it's you know, not three Tvachim high. A kelev could search after and potentially uncover bread because he'll move the, 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 the bricks around and find the bread. So therefore, 
you wouldn't require Badika, but only because you can concern that you might hit upon a scorpion, they said you don't have to do Badika. Now, here comes an amazing question. So, it's it, it, technically, you should be required to do Badika here, but it's only because of what? There's a scorpion there. So, why did Chazal pater everybody from doing Badika? Well, Amr Ablaza, Ablaza says, Shluchim Mitzvah ain't in his arcane. Unbelievable. If you're doing a mitzvah, nothing, nothing bad can happen to you. It's not just you shliach of a mitzvah, but if you're doing actual doing a mitzvah of doing bedikas comments, nothing, no damage can happen to you. This argument they wanted to say to get people back into the shul uh, during Corona, what we, everybody's doing a mitzvah, so and nothing bad can happen. The ain't in the zaykin. There's no, there's no nizik. So the Gemara says, "Amar Ravashi." Ravashi said. No, the, the question is that you might not be going there for the for the for the for the mitzvah. Maybe you're going to look for a ring or a, a needle that an expensive needle that you dropped there before, and therefore you're going to have kavana not for the mitzvah. You do the mitzvah, but you're also going to have a personal benefit from it, and that's not a mitzvah that could protect you if you're doing it also for a personal benefit. In such a case, love mitzvah. If you do something for a personal benefit, that's not called a mitzvah. A lot of we learned in a brayisha. A man says, "I'm giving this money to tzedakah on condition for my personal benefit. My son should get a refuah shleima. I should be, I should be merit the next world." You consider it tzadik gomer, and it's considered as if you accomplish a mitzvah. It's a good mitzvah. So therefore, just to, because he's going to do the badika and also search for a, 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 a piece of jewelry that he lost, so what? The mitzvah should protect him. And for the Gemara, wrong. We're talking about after he finishes the badika and he finished the mitzvah, he's going to continue on searching for other items. Oh, then he's not doing the mitzvah anymore. Then it could come, then the mitzvah is not protecting him. Then he'll be beaten by the, by the scorpion. And so that's why they didn't, uh, they didn't require to do Badik in that case. Abnachma Yitzchak says the Sakana is because of Goyim. What are we talking about? The time we learned it in Baraita, Chorsha ben Yehudi Laramai, a hole between a Goyim and a Jew. You could, you're supposed to check until your hand uh, reaches. And then, so if your neighbor is a Goy, you do your shear, and that's it. Plimi Omar, Plimi says, you don't have to bite it at all because there's a danger. The danger, the, so the Gemara says, what's the danger? Sticking your hand in the wall. Uh, the guy is going to think that you're doing some magic tricks. He's going to be very angry. He's going to be performing a spell on him. How did you use it all year? That, you, that now, all of a sudden, by the Badika's comment, you're all concerned that the guy may think you're doing uh, magic, black magic on him. So the Gemara says, Hossam, all year, ki shtamish yimama You're using it during the daylight and light time hours. Beloy masa gedaita, he doesn't pay attention to it. But now, at night, the night of Badika, all of a sudden, you're sticking your hand in the wall. The guy is going to think, right prior to the holiday, you're, supposed, you're, you're putting black magic on him. That type of hole that's between a guy and a Jew, that's what the Brights was talking about. That you don't have to do bedika. When you're doing a mitzvah, nothing bad can happen to you. So do the mitzvah. What do you care if the guy is going to get upset and thinking you're doing black magic? You're not going to get. Nothing will happen to you. The Gemara says, "Hey, If it's very possible, a high chance that something bad will happen, then you don't say the mitzvah is going to protect. There's too much of a chance that the uh, damage is going to happen to you. Shinema, we have a proof from this. God tells Shmuel Hanavi, go crown David, David to be the next king. So Shmuel says, God, I can't do it because Shoal is around and he's going to come and kill me. So God gives him an idea, take and make pretend like you're doing a carbon. So you see that God, even though God told Shmuel to do something, but Shmuel said, I can't do it because there's a good chance that Shoal will kill me. God says, you're correct. The mitzvah that I, my commandment is not going to protect you. You have to do, you have to do hishtadlis to protect yourself. So, if there's a, is a, is a high chance something will happen, then you don't say, the mitzvah is not going to protect you. Two more pieces of Gemara. They asked the question from Rav. 
Hani Bay Bnei Bnei Rav, the Dari Babaga. You have yeshiva boys that live in a small town, and they want to get up early to go to the base medrash, uh, to the next city, and they have to travel very early in the middle of the night. And we know from previous Gemaras that you're not supposed to travel in the middle of the night. You're supposed to travel during late daytime hours. They asked Rav, can the boys come very early to the base medrash and leave very late after night seder? Amalahu, Rav said, Nasi, alive al Tzavori. Unbelievable. The Rashiva said they should come, and whatever happens to it, I take full responsibility to it. So the Gemara says, okay, he said, Nasi, they should come. But what out, but the, the, they asked the nasal mic, shall they stay late to la, late after night say and then go home? So then Rav said, um, then that's a problem. I don't know. Maybe they should go home early because it's too dangerous to travel at night. Itma, but we learned that's not so. When you're doing a mitzvah, nothing bad can happen to you. Not when you're going and not when you're coming back. Why? Kaman kahaitana. So even when you finish the mitzvah, if you're on your way back home to the original place, nothing bad can happen to you. Kaman kahaitana, the tiny Isa ben Yehuda Oimah. We have a source for this from a Pasuk in Chumash, and Isa ben Yehuda taught this idea. Kape Omra Torah. The Torah says you're supposed to go oilul regal. The Torah says, don't, don't worry if you're going to leave and go oilul regal. Nobody is going to, no goyim are going to take over your land when you're gone. Like the, like the, Poles would take over the Jews' lands when they were deported to uh, the concentration camps. They took over their property. So the Torah says, not so when you're oil regal in Eretz Yisrael, none of the goyim are going to take over your land. You could just leave the house. Don't worry about it. God says, I'll protect you. Your, your cow will uh, graze in the meadow. Not one wild animal will cause it damage. Your your chickens, menakeres ba'ashma, will peck around the garbage, no weasel will attack it, just because you're not there. And now, says Yisab and Yehuda, kebeka kal v'choyma, ma'el, you should darken lizek, an animal is prone to be a prey for a predator, ainin is up, and the Torah promises, you own this animal, it's not going to get, uh, it's not going to get damaged, it's not going to get attacked. And they owed them themselves, the people doing the mitzvah, going up to Euler ben Regal. And Rashi explains, and I'll point it out, Odom Isle Mazel. Every human has some mazel, means a malach that protects him. It's very hard to kill a human. Ain't dark and listen. al achas kama v'kama. Certainly, humans, nothing bad is going to happen to those humans that go up, those Jews that go up to be Euler Regal. Eli el Only when you're going up to be Euler Regal. Because Arm and I, how do you know when you return uh, back home, nothing bad's going to happen to you. Talmud loy mofnisa mboikem alachto oyelecha. Malamid come to teach you shetelech when you go back after the yomtiv to go back to your home. The sense of all chos b'shalom, you're going to find your pe your your home intact. Everything will be good. God protected you. So the Gemara asked the question. Now that the chumash tells us that when you come back, everything will be okay. Why does the Chumash have to promise you that when you go, everything will be okay? Just tell me, when I come back, everything will be okay. The Rabami, this teaches you the law of Rabami. The Amar Rabami, Kol Odom, the teacher tells you a new din, that Kol Odom, Sheyesh Karka, only if you own real estate in Israel, Oil and Regal. Then you have a Chiev to go up during the, for the Yom Tiv. Karka, but if you don't own real estate, ain't Oil and Regal. You don't have to go up for, you don't have, there's no Chiev to go up for Oil and Regal. Because karka is is the key, the key over there, uh, the key over there. The I guess when you have karka and your oil regga, you're giving thanks for all the fruits and 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 good fortune that you have uh, of living in Eretz Yisrael. Anyway, that was the chiddush of the pasuk over there. Amar Av Avin Bar Avadam Rav Yitzchak. Here's another question. The Gemara asked the question. But Neima Ein Peres Kinusa Ben Yerushalayim. Why isn't the, the, the fruits that you find by the Yam Kinerek, the beautiful fruits, you don't find in Jerusalem? You, you would think Jerusalem is the capital city of Israel, should have the nicest fruits there. The answer is, we want the Jews, to, when the Euler Regal, to be Euler Regal Lishma. The Euler Regal shouldn't say, Ah, Ilimoli Loyalina Lecha Paris Kinus Bishlaim Dayenu. If we just had the only, if we only were successful in eating the beautiful fruits of Jerusalem, that would have been enough. In other words, 
that made the trip worthwhile, that we were able to eat this great fruit in Jerusalem. So therefore, Nimtsis, it'll come out, Aliyah Shloy They were not going for the right reason. The right reason is to be oil regal, not to eat the fruit. So that's why God made it that the beautiful fruits of the Kinneret did not grow in Jerusalem. Another thing said, that why is the hot water, hot springs of Tiberia not in Jerusalem? So the people who are should not say, if you had these hot springs, great baths, great spa uh, hotels in Jerusalem, then people would say, oh, it was worthwhile going just to bathe in the hot springs. And their whole oil regal will lose its main uh, focus. It will be a regal So therefore, God made it that there's no hot springs in, over there in, in, the, in, the, in Jerusalem. One more piece of Gemara. This reminds me uh, of a guy that I know, uh, he's a Satpara, a very wealthy guy. And he told me that... Uh, he does not, you know, all the Satmars, they get buried in Jerusalem. And uh, he told me that they, he doesn't, it, it, he gets buried in Monroe. And he says he doesn't want to be buried in Monroe because he, when his family comes to visit him, he doesn't want them to visit him and then make the trip to Woodbury Common. So, uh, so, uh, so therefore there'll be their trip to visit him on his yard site will be Shleil so he says, you know what, I'm going to get buried in New Jersey. For a joke, he said that. But uh, you see the same idea in the Talmud. The Talmud says that Jerusalem was not full of the nice uh, lo- uh, uh, natural springs and beautiful fruit that you find in other parts of New Israel. Okay, one last piece of the Gemara. We learned in the Mishnah of a Meh Omru Beishuris. So the Gemara says, Martefan de who said anything about being, uh, you have to do Bedika in a wine, in a, in a wine cellar. The Mishnah says you're supposed to do it. No, but hachi kama. This is what the Mishnah said. If it's a place that you don't bring chametz, you don't have to do bidika. Storage wine and storage places of oil, you don't need bidika. Why did they tell you that at least two rows in a wine cellar you have to do bidika? That type of wine cellar is mokam shemachnisa by chametz umistape. It's a type of wine cellar that there's a possibility you can bring in their chametz and you use that chametz, you use it during the meal. That's the type of wine cell that we required you to, uh, to bring up, to, to do bedika, to do bedika on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, Pes- on Er Pesach. So, Beishamei Ayim is Shtei Shuruz. Amar Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says, Shtei Shuruz, Amar Min Aretz Vat Shmei Akoira. Rabbi Yechon Ayim is Shur Aches Kemingam. So, it's a machlekes of how it looks. So Beishamai says, according to Beishamai, according to the first version of Beishamai, let's do it this way. According to the first version of Beishamai, you have to do the first two rows that face the inside when you come in. So let's say there's uh, uh, the 10, 100, uh, you know, 10 this way and 10 this way. So the first 200 that you come into the place, that's, the, that's what you have to do. This is way one version of how to learn Beishamai. The other version to way to learn Bashami is that you, you do the front, in the front, the, all the barrels that are in the front facing the door, and the top uh, rows facing the ceiling. So that's the Sitas of Bashami. Kimingam, like the letter Dal. Tanya Kavasar Rabbi Huda, Tanya Kavasar Rabbi Yoda. Tanya Kavasar Rabbi Huda, Bashami, I'm Shteshu, Snekol Marte, Ushteshu, Rabbi Mina Oretz, Vachmei Kora. It's from the ground to the top, to the ceiling. To the to the to the part that faces the ceiling of the of the wine cellar, it's the first two rows. They show us they call a martev. Chitzoyne rois apeches, the outer one that sees the door when you enter the when you enter the wine cellar. Val yoyne rois akoyin, and the top one sees the roof, just the opposite. Shilfnim emeno, or shemat emeno, ain't from from the uh, inside, and the bottom of it doesn't need vidika. Again. Uh, the, this part doesn't need bedika, but according to Beishamai, this part needs bedika. As I use the example, according to Beishamai, if this was a, a, a wine cellar that held a thousand barrels, you would have to be bedik two hundred barrels, either this way or this way. That's the machlekes. Now the next the same machlekes you'll have Beisilo. Beisilo on mishteishu is a chitzoyin shteilyonis. Am Rav Huna elyonis l'matamena. The first two rows. Um, from the when you come in, 
So that's these two pictures over here. Either it's, it's this picture over here, the first row and the second row, which according to Basil would be about 20 barrels. And according to, according to this, according to the second row, it's just the top two. Not the, the first row and the second row, it's the top two. So that's the machlekes. My time at the Rav, Dayek Hitzoynis, because Hillel used the words, the outer ones, but he used the word also top ones. He meant the, the, all the way bottom, that you don't include. But the first two top rows, that you should include. Ushmul said, no, the two top rows, that are on, which are on that ceiling. By time, because Dayek al because Hillel used the word, the top ones. But he used the word, outer ones. So he meant, he meant the, the ultimate bottom ones, but, but the top one could mean the first one and the second one behind it. And so my time, so the Rabhiya, Tony Kavasi the Rav, the Kuli Tanoi Kavasi the Shmuel, everybody learned, all the rest of the Tanoi learned Basil and Beishama according to the way Shmuel learned it. The Hilkasei Kavasi the Shmuel, the Halochi is like Shmuel, that all you have to do according to the base Hillel is these two rows. This one and the one behind it. That's it. And that's the way we, that's the halacha of a wine cellar that you're using uh, during the meals. That kind of wine cellar would need a badika. Okay. Oh. Okay. Nice Thank stuff you. today. A lot to learn. Okay. Good. All right. All the best. Have a, have a good night, everyone. Good night.